Hey there fellow travelers, welcome back to the adventures of a traveling Don. My name is Benj Minow and today we are here in Cairo. So one of the first things to know about Cairo is uh, there are no lanes when it comes to uh, cars. So if you're driving, if you want to rent a car, just go with the flow because it is uh, it's it's organized chaos, shall we say? And if you want to cross the street, it's basically a game of chicken. You know, you just kind of wait for your moment to uh, kind of cross the street. So but anyway, behind me that is Kapinski Hotel. I'm staying here in the gardens uh, garden district. Uh, which is right off the Nile, uh, which is kind of cool. It looks like they're doing a lot of construction around here, but the Nile's right out that way. Um, so we're gonna go walk around a little bit and then we're gonna head towards the East Bazaar. But yeah, I thought I'd just give you that little quick tidbit about Cairo is, uh, yeah, so you just uh, watch your butt when you're trying to cross the street uh, and run when you see an opening. So I'm down here near uh, Khan El Khalili, uh, which is a little bit further that way. Um, but this is kind of like uh, this street right here, uh, Mosleddin, um, is goes back about 600 years. It's got several different mosques that are even older than that around here. But it is a fantastic. It's just vibrant. It's got a lot of lot of just kind of like uh, shops, uh, you know, just little like places to grab some quick snack or something like that. This is actually really cool. This is on the eastern side of Cairo. Highly, highly recommend coming here. But we're gonna do this, and then I'm just gonna go up and down the street and then we're gonna go over to the bazaar. So off that main strip earlier, we're coming into a couple of like the side um, alleyways in the market. The whole area is basically a market, but you have basically all of these spices. Like this is the spice market down here. Like this is the old market, about 600 years old. Oh, this is hibiscus? Yeah, hibiscus. Ooh, that looks cool. Hibiscus tea. Ooh, I do love me some hibiscus tea. Hibiscus tea, red tea. Red tea. Red tea, yeah, not black tea, red tea. Yeah. No caffeine. Yeah, <laughs> I have had it before. It's so good. Cinnamon. Cinnamon. Ooh, cinnamon. Water. I don't think I've ever seen cinnamon outside of just the spice itself. You know, in the what you get from the grocery store. That's cool. This cumin. Cumin. Mmm. Nice traditional cumin. Wow. It's coriander. This is coriander. Coriander. Very cool. Yeah, was, uh, I'm super excited about all of this stuff because usually most of the spices we get in the United States, it's pepper. like, it's pepper. all, black, black you know, the crushed stuff, black powdered pepper. stuff. That is traditional black pepper. Black oh, pepper. man. Yeah. Make me sneeze. <laughs> this is your grandfather's shop. Yes. It's in Perfume Palace. Everybody check that out. Yes. Okay. Where from? From Texas. So I say, ladies or gentlemen, if you're looking to smell kind of really nice, this perfume palace uh, is like, this is really cool. Just like the the setup that they have here. And I got to smell a few of them. He put like lotus flower right here. That actually smells really, really nice. It's actually this gentleman and his gra uh, grandfather owns the place? Grandfather's, grandfather's shop. Grandfather's yeah. shop. Uh, what's your name? 
Muhammad Noor. Muhammad Noor. So if you are here in the uh, Khan, uh, El Khali area, Moise Street. Yeah, in Moise Street, just definitely check out Perfume Palace. And it's kind of like you have the main strip that way, you just come on down this way, and I got this right here for you guys. I'll also put in the description um, his name and all the contact information if you guys ever want to come and you're doing a tour here or whatnot definitely come to the perfume palace it's really really nice and you have also like uh, a, a natural collagen for a stretch mark for pimples for black spots and you have an oil special for hair like argan from morocco avogado hash avogani this is a special oil and they don't hair. use any alcohol or anything no, no, it's no, just all kind all, of like natural special. oils yes, and stuff yes. like that so if yes. you're into that kind of stuff definitely like i said perfume palace and i'll put their stuff down here in the description as well but this is actually a really kind of cool uh, place. This is another branch off from the main road. So. So after all of that walking, all that fun in the bazaar, I gotta get, I'm parched. I gotta get a little uh, food in me in as well, so I'm super hungry. But uh, my buddy Nick Brown, who I graduated high school with, he actually works here in Cairo um, doing uh, archeological digs. Unfortunately, he's down at Luxor. I'm not gonna be able to see him on this trip, but he gave me a lot of great um, information. And one of the places that he loves, if you're near the Khan El Khalibi uh, bazaar, you come across the street um, past the, uh, the, the mosque that's uh, out here. I think it's Al Azar Mosque. Azar Mosque. Azar Mosque. Um, but uh, you come to this restaurant called the uh, Tekit uh, Khan Katul. Um, and it's kind of like upstairs. It's just kind of like this nice little, I think it's like a hookah uh, uh, bar. But they do serve food here. Um, I got myself some nice ice cold hibiscus tea. So I'm going to try that. Ooh. That's got a little tartness to it, and that actually has quite a bit of sweetness to it. I wasn't expecting that, but it's almost like almost tastes like a, like a juice tea, but it's actually really good. Ooh, that's yummy. But yeah, Tekit Khan Katun, definitely come here. Uh, I'm waiting for the food, and I'll show you guys that as soon as that comes out. All right, so basically, I got like the mixed grill kind of thing here for lunch. Um, so it's like about three different types of like meats. You have, of course, hummus bowl. You have a nice uh, little bowl of vegetables and whatnot. And then, of course, you have the bread. What is this? Is this ish bread? So basically, very similar to like pita. It almost looks like very similar, although it's a little bit different texture to it. But I'm gonna try a little bit of this hummus first. Mm. Yeah. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. And then of course you gotta try the meat. Yeah, well, it looks like a little sausage. I'm not sure if it's lamb or beef, but I'll try that. Mm. Yeah. That's fire for sure. That's fantastic. And it looks like I even got like a little piece. You look at that a big old piece of chicken right there. We're gonna try this chicken. Oh. Cuts rather nicely. Try a little bit of that. Mmm, very tender chicken. That's nice. Nicely spiced. It's not crazy, but it's a nice meal you know, that we're sharing here. And it is absolutely fantastic. This is really good. Great recommendation, Nick. Well done. But, uh, yeah. It's nuts driving here in Cairo. I told you guys there was no lanes. There's literally... No lanes. In the United States, what would be like a two-lane road here? This is <laughs> only like three, sometimes four cars right next to each other. <laughs> Yet, within that, I haven't actually seen one single accident whatsoever. And it seems to flow very well. I guess that's within, within chaos, there is order. And sometimes when there's too much order, there is chaos. Such as in the United States, everything's all blocked off, everything's in lanes. People crash into each other all the damn time. 
I haven't seen an accident since I got here. Rather impressive. Rather impressive. But still, mad as hell. So a quick backstop at the hotel uh, just to recharge the phone just a little bit and also I totally forgot that I had a, didn't put my belt on this morning so I got to the market I started walking around I'm like why is my pants sagging so much because I lost a, you know a couple pounds at least on the trip I'm like ah oh, shit so trying to keep the pants up while holding this plus having my camera plus having the backpack I was like I was kind of like this like throughout the market like the whole time I was like yeah but anyway, yeah, so, uh, but anyway, I'm staying at the Kapinski Hotel. I'll definitely leave a link in the description for this place. Really nice hotel. It's it's expensive. Um, I went a little bougie for the last part of this trip, uh, but I budgeted very, very well. So, decided to uh, kind of splurge on the last part in Cairo. And I mean, to be fair, it's not a bad view. I basically have the Nile right in front of me. That's absolutely fantastic. Uh, and thankfully, the windows and the walls here are kind of like semi-soundproof, so you don't really hear too much, uh, particularly early in the morning when you have the uh, the call to prayer, because we have a small little uh, mosque like right, right here. And uh, I've heard it um, in the afternoon when I'm kind of like conscious about it, but it's low enough when you're inside, when you close everything up, that it, it doesn't bother you when you sleep. So, But even so, not a bad spot to stay. And it's a really, really nice hotel. It has its own spa and everything. Fantastic. So. All right, so we're gonna charge up the phone and then onwards, back out to Cairo. So far, I would say impressions between the uh, difference between like Zamalek and Al Manial. There are a lot more lights here in Al Manial. Um, the streets are a little bit more ordered, um, although you still do have areas where it is kind of like rubble-ish. Like there's still a lot of construction, reconstruction, building going on, all that kind of good stuff. But there is a lot more order to the Al Manial area. Um, and definitely a lot more lights, for sure. Outside of the Nile, like in the Zamalek area, all along the River Nile, uh, where they have all the restaurants, that's where you're gonna get a lot of the lights. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I like this area, the Al Manial. There's a lot going on here, particularly on this main strip here. That's for sure. So back at the hotel again for the night. Um, I'm gonna have uh, dinner here. There's actually a really nice uh, Turkish restaurant. We're gonna go downstairs and uh, check that out um, shortly. But I just kind of want to give you guys a view. I'm up here at the rooftop bar, which has got the pool. I actually felt the water is actually rather warm. So you can actually, even though it's January, it would not be too bad to go swimming. I mean, it's only about like 59 degrees right now outside, so it's not super cold. Um, but that water, I felt it. I was like, oh damn, I wish I'd brought my swim trunks. I hadn't needed them this entire trip because it's winter in Europe. Uh, but I wish I'd had some for this. It's, oh, that water's really, really nice. Um, but yeah, no, this, uh, from the rooftop view, uh, definitely, like I said at the beginning, check out Kapinski Hotel. It, you are putting out money for it, but if you can afford it, um, even for a night or two while you're here in Cairo, it is fantastic. It's a great hotel. Um, it is, I think it's considered five star, but it's not super fancy. It's not the Four Seasons. Like, I booked it last minute because of changes, and I was still able to get it at about 200 with taxes and everything, just a little over 200 a night, um, which usually I'm trying to find closer to like 60, 50 a night at max. But to splurge at the end of a trip, 
um, if you have the money for it, it's actually not too bad. I mean, it's the beds are comfy, the room's great, and right here you can see this view is phenomenal. Um, but it's just this beautiful skyline of the Nile Delta here in downtown Cairo. And of course, you gotta get yourself just a nice little vodka, vodka soda, just something easy to sip on while uh, watching the view. So cheers. Thank you. So what that was, was basically um, the sultans, when they tell you they uh, treat you like a sultan, the sultans used to have their hands washed before they would uh, dine. And usually it was with some kind of water, like a rose water or whatnot. It's just, it's got a nice smell to that. That's really nice. Thank you very much. So that was actually really, really cool. That's what I loved about it the first time I was here last night. So I was like, I got to just to experience that again. That was that was awesome. I love that. Yeah, I mean, you kind of pay for it, but it's like fantastic. Okay, so first course has arrived, and this is the Tarhana soup or the Anatolian soup. And Anatolia is a region of Turkey. Uh, this is kind of like a Sultan favorite of like an Ottoman style recipe, like 15th century recipe. It's basically sun dried vegetable soup with uh, a little bit of like minced meat and uh, I think it's like minced lamb meat maybe. And then, of course, a little bit of mint to freshen it up. So it looks actually really, really good. Just kind of like a pure soup. Rather, rather thick for it, what it is. It's nice and steaming. Try that. Mm. Oh, that was warm. That went down really nice. That's really good. That's actually... I'm going to get some, maybe some tomato, a little bit of eggplant in there as the vegetables and you can that mint is on the back end so it's kind of got like this nice refreshing kind of like back taste which is really good and then of course they brought out a little bit of kind of like homemade house like bread with like you get like three different dips you get like a spicy sauce you get a all of course uh, extra virgin olive oil and then like a little um, cream cheese i think is what he told me i'm gonna try it with a little spicy a little capsation going here for you mm. the bread's good nice and fluffy very soft got a little crunch from the seeds on it yeah. decently spicy it's not super spicy but it's not bad at all mm. good first round all right so for the main course i have what is called kuzu pirzola i think i got that right but it is basically char char grilled or char broiled um, lamb chops with uh, a little bit of like basically mashed potatoes with a nice mushroom sauce on top, some peppers, and there's like a green oil in there. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but it looks absolutely fantastic. So we're gonna go ahead and take a bite, get a little bit of that mushroom sauce as well as mashed potato with that. I'm gonna try that. Mm. That's that's really tender lamb. Mm. That's good. Not overly seasoned. And the mashed potatoes are nice, very, very creamy. Um, not chunky at all. And it looks like it looks like there's actually like like a, like a Let me show you guys. There's a tomato in there, but it looks like a slightly charred tomato in there. That looks actually really good. Let me try that. Mm. Nice a little acidity kick to kind of wash down like the um, the meatiness of the lamb and just kind of like the the richness of the mashed potatoes. That mushroom sauce is actually really good too. This is fantastic. Mm. Okay, so for dessert, I got a mouthful, and it's not just something to fill my mouth. It's literally saying it is a mouthful. It's called fistikli fistikli dondaburi uh, kadai. And I probably messed the hell out of that. But basically, Kadaif is a, um, if I read it correctly, it's kind of like a very thin Turkish noodle. Um, kind of, I think that's what it is. Uh, it's kind of like cooked through like a sieve. Um, so it uh, it's very, very thin. It, honestly, it looks like a little nest on both the top and the bottom. Um, 
or maybe like if it was like coconut or something like that. But it is very much a noodle, and it's basically two of the kareis, which is the the like kind of like a little noodle cake, basically is what it is, with pistachio, and then they put a little ice cream on top of there. So it's uh, it's, it's interesting to eat. <laughs> it's a little hard, but uh, we'll try this out. Oh. That's nice. It's got a weird texture to it. It's like it almost has that coconut texture to it, but without the coconut flavor. And then um, the ice cream's nice, very cool. Um, I'm guessing that's just traditional um, vanilla ice cream. But the pistachios are kind of like held together by some kind of like sweet, I don't know if it's honey or some kind of sugar thing. But it's not super sweet, mildly sweet. It's just got an interesting texture. But that's actually really nice. I like that. Very interesting. It's very impronounceable. So it's a long ring name. But delicious dessert. Great way to cap off the night for sure. Whew. Okay, that was absolutely delicious. Osmanli restaurant at the Kempinski Hotel is fantastic. It is expensive, but to me it is well worth kind of like the whole um environment the whole experience because they do treat you like a sultan there they're constantly just kind of like making sure you're okay without being overbearing you, you know they're always just keeping an eye on you you get kind of like that little um that little hand wash at the beginning which is really kind of cool that's a lot of fun but it is well worth it uh but it is definitely expensive uh use it as a treat it's not a consistent everyday uh place to go because it can rack up real fast but it is, I had a great time today. Uh, definitely the market, though, is the star of the show today. Khan El Khalili was fantastic. Uh, it was, thanks to my uh, guide who just kind of like I randomly ran into Abdul. Uh, do watch out for that stuff. Um, you can get some gems out of that. You do want to make sure that you're not being, you know, swindled in any way. But he was kind of a kindly old gentleman I just started talking to, and he just started showing me around. And I bought him, you know, lunch, and I gave him like 50 uh, uh, Egyptian pounds, which is like, I think like seven bucks to eight bucks something like that um but uh you know it was a lot of fun he showed me all the you know good good kind of like great uh, spots for spices and teas and all that kind of good stuff um nick brown my buddy shout out to you for the place for lunch uh tekit um kan uh, katun kat, kutan katun something like that but that was absolutely phenomenal as well so i appreciate that nick but uh, anyway, this is a little bit of a shorter one. Um, just kind of like showing you a little bit of kind of like Cairo flair and flavor. Whereas in tomorrow, at least for me, next week for you guys when the next video comes out will be, of course, the Giza pyramids and Sakata as well. I've already got a tour set up for that. So I hope you guys enjoy that. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure that you give it a like and give me a comment in below. Tell me what you liked about it. If you've been to Cairo before, share me, share with me your experiences as well. But in the meantime, guys, I will see you guys on the next adventure. And just remember, hit that subscribe button on the way out. But guys, peace out, and I'll see you guys on the next adventure. Peace.